Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Colour With Me, where I, the Black Gallerina, will be talking about contemporary art galleries, curatorial practice and decolonial theory whilst colouring away. Today I'll be colouring an image I drew of Tichuba. Tichuba was an enslaved woman who was known for being one of the first people to be accused of practising witchcraft during the Salem Witch Trials. The materials that I'll be using are the Touch New marker pens and the Frisk marker paper A4 pad in white. And with all that said, let's get started. The topic of this video is epistemicide. The word epistemicide means the killing of knowledge systems, specifically the destruction and subjugation of indigenous knowledge systems under the British Empire. When I first came across the term epistemicide, it was in the context of British higher education and decolonizing academia. One of the most useful things that I read about epistemicide was an essay written by Professor Bud L. Hall and Rajesh Tandon titled Decolonization of Knowledge epistemicide, participatory research, and higher education. It was in this essay that I was first introduced to the term knowledge democracy, which they described as a concept that acknowledges the importance of multiple knowledge systems, such as organic, spiritual, and land-based systems, frameworks arising from social movements, and the knowledge of the marginalized or excluded. Although this essay mostly focused on decolonizing academia, it led me to think about how epistemicide manifested in curatorial knowledge and how knowledge democracy could be made possible in gallery spaces. The concept of the white cube gallery is the first thing that comes across my mind when I think of epistemicide. The white cube gallery trend first emerged during the era of modernism, which was a period defined by the expansion of European cultural influence. Many of the properties of the classic white cube gallery aesthetic are reflective in the characteristics associated with European modernism. Specifically, the focus on displaying a sense of universalism and neutrality and achieving this through the marginalisation of other cultures and creative practices that do not conform to Western colonial conventions. Standard white cube galleries are identifiable by their white clean ward spaces, minimalist design and minimal references of social and political context when it comes to accompanying text and interpretation. Although the modernist art movement only lasted to the 1970s, it had a transformative effect on the ways in which art was made and exhibited. And the white cube format quickly became a widely adopted industry standard for modern galleries. During the 80s, the art critic Brian Doherty published his book on white cube galleries called Inside the White Cube, The Ideology of Gallery Space. In this book, he described the white cube as a modernist obsession and explains the many ways that they work to support the social and cultural production of privilege in the arts through its exclusionary characteristics. I really enjoyed reading Inside the White Cube and I think he made several excellent points about the modern art scene and elitism. However, I was kind of frustrated by the fact that he failed to properly acknowledge the connection between modernity and European colonialism or recognise how galleries also play a role in reinforcing Eurocentricism by marginalising the art and cultures of people of colour. Even though Inside the White Cube was published in the 80s, many of the observations can still be seen in contemporary art spaces today. Personally, I've lost count the number of times I've heard somebody state that the best way to display contemporary art is via the white cube format. As if it's a universal fact that any other mode of curation will ruin the experience of viewing artwork, no matter what the artwork looks like or what it's about. What I found interesting is how so many contemporary art galleries still present themselves as neutral spaces, while the curatorial processes and institutions cultures are riddled with practices of cultural exclusion, colonial ideology and epistemicide. Although these galleries may attempt to conceal the racial, political or class background of the artists and curators that they work with, Google is free. Therefore, it only takes a few hours of research to reveal how white a gallery really is. I very much doubt that many of these spaces will put their hands up and say that they do not welcome people of colour. But when the artists and curators that they work with are predominantly white, does that not suggest otherwise? When the only people of colour at private view events are the security or service staff, is that not something that galleries recognise as an issue that they need to address? And if a gallery acknowledges all of this, 
but chooses to continue with business as usual, are they not guilty of upholding institutional racism in the contemporary art world? In my opinion, curators can either be accessories to epistemicide or play a key role in challenging the reproduction of colonial aesthetics and ideology. For them to be in the latter camp, they need to do more than squeeze the odd artist of colour within an annual exhibition programme. They need to do more than settle for the tiny underfunded community projects which will evidently be used by the gallery for decades to come in anti-racist statements as proof of diversity work. They need to intervene when they hear poor excuses for the underrepresentations of artists of colour. That means speaking up when someone suggests that embedding cultural equity will lead to a lack of quality. That means calling bullshit when somebody claims that they simply couldn't find any artists of colour to work with. They need to see challenging racism as a priority and not a side project. Whether it's a university or gallery, attempting to challenge systems of knowledge production is a difficult task when the current systems in place have historically benefited and currently benefit those in power. In order to create this change in gallery spaces, curators must go through a process of acknowledging and unlearning the exclusionary practices associated with contemporary art curation. Once we let go of the colonial restrictions on our imaginations, we can then go forth in reimagining spaces that aren't centred around Eurocentric aesthetics. For some curators, this process might result in them going against everything that they've ever been taught about curation and discovering that at one point or the other, they have contributed to acts of epistemicide. But working through this discomfort is vital to decolonizing curatorial knowledge and practice. Well, that's it for this Colour With Me video. I hope that you enjoyed my musings and like how the picture turned out. And if you enjoy this video and want to hear more, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you for watching. Take care and see you soon.